So here we are, uh, another cheeky bonus episode of Work the Left Side, um, purely to discuss last weekend's AEW pay-per-view and this week's Dynamite. Uh, anybody who knows us knows we love our AEW, we love to talk about it, uh, and it always gives us something to talk about in fairness. So yeah, another impromptu episode. Uh, so as, as always... Mr. AEW, Ash is with us. Greetings, humans. And uh, we also have Logan. Dude, how's it going, man? You right? <laughs> yeah, I'm all right. Yep, yep. Awesome. The junior towers. <laughs> so, uh, gentlemen, obviously, I know you've both watched both. Uh, got a feeling you're going to have a few things to say, Ash. Uh, so I will... Throw it out to Logan, first of all. To <laughs> him get his words in. Uh, <laughs> think to the pay-per-view, dude. Uh, pay-per-view, I enjoyed it. Uh, it's from Obviously, I watched it all, and I, there was... I personally don't think there was that many bad matches. I mean, there, there was obviously some there was zero. better than others, but there weren't any bad matches. And... I think the zero, the way they kicked off in the zero hour was probably the best way they could have done with that six man. Mm-hmm. I think it was. I don't yeah. know if you two watched the zero hour, if you just went straight into the. I did. I missed it, so I'll leave you two to discuss. I don't like yeah, it. Was... It was Brisco- Mark Briscoe teaming with uh, the Lucha Bros and, yeah. versus, was it the Varsity Athletes and Ari Davari? Yeah. Yes, yeah. so it was um, Ari and Davari. Um, I'll just call him the Brock Lesnar wannabe because I can't remember his fucking name. <laughs> pa- pa- um, yeah, that's the one. <laughs> yeah. And the other one. It was then three versus, yeah, Mark Briscoe and Lucha Bros, which, yeah, I just thought was an absolutely outstanding match. Just being able to watch Mark Briscoe run, I just thought it was brilliant because I'm only more recent to him. I've not seen much of him. I saw him the back end before his brother obviously passed when they were doing the stuff with FTR and the dog collar match and that sort of thing. But other than that, didn't really know much about him till now. So yeah, I thought it were it were good. I enjoyed it. Cool. Yeah. Um, so was it sorry, um, you've mentioned the bottle lesson wanna be that that sounds like Parker Burjo. Yeah. Was it him? Was it, not, was it Tony Nice? That other dude? And... Yeah, it was Tony Nice, Parker, and Ara. Ari. Because Parker's, yeah. Parker's not with those guys. Parker's was it? with. It was Josh, Josh Woods, it, wasn't it? Yeah. Oh, yeah, it was Josh Woods. Sorry. Yeah, sorry. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It's because uh, he was on recently. That's why it's been made. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But no, Parker's with uh, Swerve, he? he was obviously on yeah, Rampage. Of... Yeah. Park, Parker was Parker was with Ari Davari's Trust Busters, but for like all of all of five minutes. So yeah, I think that's why I, I just kind of got them all. <laughs> yeah. well, well, I kind of forget about all them lot because they're not that interesting to me. So I kind of <laughs> it's easily done. Um, but but yeah. I'm not bothered about Ari being involved. But Nice and Josh are two very very rounded, uh, technically sorted guys. Yeah, so, I like those guys. Yeah, yeah. they've gone down. Bit of always involvement. If you just get those two as a team, I'd, I'd like to see them as a tag team going forward. So, uh, any other matches? Yeah. Oh. That was it. That was it. That was that, the rest of it was just video packages and a, co- a couple of interviews. Britt Baker gave a uh, a little interview, and the crowd went wild. Well, when she uh, when she appeared and stuff. Um, but yeah, most, the rest of it was just video packages. Hyping yeah, the uh, hyping the paper. <clears throat> She was just kind of um, hyping the all access that her and Adam are doing. At, I think back end of this month. Uh, back in oh. yeah, back end of this month. I think it's signed. Yeah, a couple of weeks. AEW all access. Yeah, cold first match back, as we discussed last week. Indeed, yeah. Uh, I'm, not, right, I'm not sure whether it's next week or the week after or whatever it is. Looking forward to it's it. Up, it's coming up basically. <laughs> what was the first match of the pay for you? I'm struggling to remember. Oh, Jericho's. Jericho Starks, Jer- yeah. So, this was one of the matches we had down 
as why well, I, I had down as being not overly emotionally involved in. I knew it would be a good match. Same as the Christian Cage, Jungle Boy. Um, mm-hmm. I just really, it pained me to say because it was a Starks match, but and a Jericho match, you know, Jericho is a goat. Uh, but yeah, again, it was, it was a good match. Thoroughly enjoyed it. Just wasn't mm-hmm. overly emotionally involved in it. Yeah. There was only two things I wanted from this match to be entertained and for Starks to win. And I got both of those. So it, it ticked both boxes. And it didn't last long as well. Was it like less than 15 minutes as well? So, you know, it was kind of bish bash bosh. Welcome to the show. Just, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like you, like, you enjoy this one? Yeah. I enjoyed it. And like I said, it, with it being only like a 15, 10, 15 minute match, I think that's what you want from a starting, <clears throat> from what you want of the match that's opening a pay per view. You don't want it to like run too long, but you don't want it to be, you know, sort of like, done and dusted you want it to have a bit of time for them to work off each other and get the stuff in get the stuff in and yeah which i mean i think they both did perfectly to be honest i think they both got in what they needed to it advanced the storyline between starks and jjas so yeah. it literally did everything it needed to yeah drew it drew it to a, con- to a conclusion as well so that, that was another thing that i wanted i wanted this feud to be like drawn to a conclusion because it felt feels like it's gone on for a quite a while uh, yeah. and so, so that ticked another box <laughs> that's one thing that's what a later match failed to tick oh i thought it ticked until i watched dynamite this week and then it unticked it yeah so, sure. yeah um because I'm, I'm quite happy for that feud to be done and dusted but it appears to be ongoing um after this match then what was it? It was the final burial between Jack Perry yeah. and Christian Cage, which was basically just Undertaker versus um, HBK in a casket match. <laughs> yeah. If, if, you, if you paid attention, if you paid attention to the uh, to the attire, we were messaging, we were watching it live and messaging, weren't we? It was they, they were basically, you know, um, dressed kind of subtly like Undertaker and um, Shawn Michaels with the jeans and the uh, the, the the full black. In Christian's case, but uh, yeah, I enjoyed this. It was it was a hell of a lot. I didn't expect it to not be good, if you know what I mean. But again, not the the invert the the emotional um, involvement wasn't quite as much as it could have been. But like I I thought this was ma- this match was really well worked and really well done, and I enjoyed it. Yeah, yeah, yeah I, I I liked it. I thought, yeah, it ticked all the boxes. Uh, we knew it was going to be a good match. We said on the episode last week it was going to be a good match. It was just tainted through Christian's injury that it kind of went on longer than it should have been. If this match had been two months ago when it was scheduled, well, I would have been hyped for it. The emotion was at its peak. Mm. Done, there. Um, oh, yeah. done and dusted now. Jungle Boy, as we said, he's now Jungle Man. Uh, he's leveled up. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> Be interesting to see who, who both guys feud with next. Yes. Yeah. Uh, again, the match we don't work well on for too long because there, there were bigger things on this pay per view, which I think mm-hmm. is coming up next. It was my uh, first real emotional investment. It's the trios match next, if I believe. It yes. was indeed. So it was the trio's titles, the Elite versus House of Black, and holy shit, this was amazing. <laughs> I knew it was going to be amazing, and it just had a big match feel. And it also had a big match feel within the match, because when Kenny and Malachi Black were in that ring together, it was just like, damn, this needs to be like a world title yeah. feud at some at some point on a big pay-per-view. Like, Wow, like I got goosebumps just what they weren't, they weren't even doing anything, they just stood there and I got goosebumps just looking at look, looking at the screen and I was yeah, so cool. The match was awesome and the um the ending was tremendous and we got the uh, the result we both hoped for. Fucking too right. This is this was such a good match. One of my matches of the night. Yep, definitely. <clears throat> You enjoyed it? Yeah, I enjoyed it. Like I said, I think Ash pretty much said it all. It was it was exactly what everyone wanted it to be. It's what it needed to be. I mean, that spot where Kenny and Malachi were just sat, they were literally sat staring at each other. I was just like, 
Wow. <laughs> <laughs> I like in his little seated position he does and then Kenny's I think he's down on his knees he's doing like a weird knee sit thing and it was like wow <laughs> you two yeah. really want to be crap out of each other <laughs> exciting <laughs> that's, that's the uh, that's the main event match for me now um, and I knew a guy a while ago uh, it was a bit of a cunt but the one thing he did say that I remember as being true is that he always compared Buddy Murphy as being the next Kenny Omega in, in ring ability. Um, yeah. And I fully agree. Just, he lacks the charisma at the minute. But for me, when Buddy and Omega got face to face and just kind of squared off, that gave me goosebumps as well for, you know, potentially yeah. down the line. That that could be an instant five-star match between uh, Murphy but, and Omega. As well. Buddy, Buddy can go, dude. Like, he's really, really good. And it's, Probably a good thing that he's in so in a in a stable with someone. Well, Brody's really good talk, really good at talking as well. So like Mal- Malachi is obviously the leader, but Brody talks really really well as well. So um, it doesn't need to really talk all that much. So it's, and they made they made Brody look like a beast as well. The fucking face paint, bro. Seriously, their entrance. How good was their entrance, Julia, with like the the sheet and the lights, and then they walk up to it and they look like twenty feet tall and. They, Ah, oh, fantastic. <laughs> the presentation was so good. I'm a big House of Black mark, uh, obviously. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, so. I said to Rob Benjamin right if they lost. I, was, I would have been this close to never watching AEW again. I was oh, like, that was that. Yeah. As bad as it sounds, I don't think they could have, I don't think they would have done that. As bad as I think they made it look like they were going to, because of how bad they had the build up to this match. I think when it comes to this match, I think it was a pretty much guarantee they were going to win it because what well, they have, yeah. well, they have to sort of thing to. It's kind of one of yeah, those yeah. things in wrestling. They kind of such annoy all the art. fans by such, such the art of, of everyone wrestling. Wants, all of a sudden, it's like, oh, they've they've won. <laughs> wow. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Sort of a, yeah. We actually believe in these teams, so. <laughs> Still with that, but you've never kind of, I don't want to sound like a, a young books hater or Kenny hater or anything, but you also don't want to put it past them as in like, just be like, no, nah, we've only just got the titles back, let us just hold them for a little bit longer, even though it makes sense for the black to get them. You know, well, obviously, books and Omega know the business. They fully knew that the House of Black needed the titles, deserved the titles. So, yeah. Oh, yes. they look So, uh, Easily, easily match of the night so far. Um, I'm glad you said so far. <laughs> yeah. yeah. This, this was, was tremendous, good. though. Like, I was absolutely on the edge of my seat watching this. Great. Presentation. But Julia Hart even feels like, you know, a deal. She's she's involved when she needs to be involved. They're not using her in any sort of weird or wacky way. Um, just with what she needs to do. She's an asset to the team kind of thing. Oh, and nice. um, Looks for part as well, which is absolutely banging. So yeah, hundred percent, like a little, uh, like a little witch. Yeah, witch vibes, nailing but the look, I, good stuff. The outfit, the costumes, it's just yeah, it's just awesome. House of Black is easily the best trio in in AEW in wrestling for me at the minute. In wrestling, yeah, for sure. There's not many come close. Mystique, aesthetic, capability, potential, it's all there. That's it. It's not like it's all substance, no style, or style over substance. It's just it, they are 100% across the board, tick all the boxes. And appearance, ability, promo, charisma. It, yeah. They, they're like the they're Lex Luger, man. They're, they're the total package. <laughs> yes, uh, absolutely. absolutely. What came after? What had. The, what had the the ordeal or the drama of trying to follow this match? It was the women's championship match. Um, so Ruby Soho versus Soraya versus Jimmy Hater, um, and it was it was fine. It was uh, obviously it followed a big match where that I was like literally on the edge of my seat. Um, and it was a good match. It was a good match. There was no no issues with it at all. And um, the what we predicted happened. Hater got the win. Soho yeah. ate the pin. Uh, but then we had a little 
little heel yep. turn afterwards, didn't we? Which I thought was quite cool. Yeah. It was suggested by the colour of um, Ruby's hair, because Ruby's hair was green. And obviously Storm and Soraya came out wearing green. So I did think to myself, could this be something? And then didn't verbalise it, but then it ended up being something. So, yeah. Um, I'm all for it. I'm all for this. Yep, yeah, uh, Logs, I know you're a massive uh, unhater of hater. Uh, yeah. so you enjoy <laughs> I don't hate him. I'm, a, I'm, annoyed, I'm more, annoyed at myself more than anything. But, oh, yes. unhater of hater. Yeah, I, I, don't, I don't hate her at all. Like, she's <laughs> one of my favourite. Yeah. yeah. Uh, she's uh, yeah, that was just, I couldn't think of a better three to just let go and go at each other with. I mean, Obviously, when you look at it, I think I could be wrong, but I think Jamie's the least experienced out of the three of them. Yeah. I want to say. So, yeah, having so, yeah. it's kind of like a boost for Jamie as well because it gets her experience with two wrestlers of obviously Soraya and Ruby's caliber. No, oh, definitely. I think uh, Jamie's very well for something, dude. So, yeah. Um, yeah. Obviously, Soraya is not much older. She's only 26, but she's been wrestling since she was 14. Yeah. Over year veteran. At the and Ruby's probably, yeah, been around for like 10 plus years. As well. Yeah. It's, yeah, for yeah, sure. It a good match. It, it worked well. They all worked well together. And it just, yeah, it was just phenomenal. <laughs> I really enjoyed yeah. it. Um, and I think I think, I think the heel turn, the heel turn. Sorry, dude. Uh, I think the heel turn was um, very much needed for Ruby because um, she's kind of just felt there for a little while rather than doing something. And to give her something, especially with like a, a main main centerpiece kind of storyline in the women's division, um, give her some something to do there is is really cool. It's good to see. And I've got to say, it's raised my interest from like down here to like way up here. Just just having it, just having Ruby uh, yeah. switch allegiances or you know choose allegiances rather. Uh, so yeah, I'm happy. <laughs> I mean, I said last week on the on the hype show, you got to, when you with a wrestler like Ruby, it goes one way or the other. If she hasn't got a storyline or something to get her teeth into, it's very easy to kind of forget about her. But if you give her something to get <clears throat> into, she's up there. She's highly entertaining. She's very good at a character. Uh, she does what she does. And now she's got something to sink her teeth into. She will be key on TV kind of thing. When she appears on TV, as seen on Dynamite, which we'll discuss, you know, it, it gets your attention. You want to see what she's doing. Um, yeah. She just jumped forward to Dynamite with uh, Willow's involvement now as well. That gives another side angle, a uh, side feud. Uh, yeah. Is that out a little bit? Obviously, yeah. because of their history, because they were a tag team for a month or so, that gives Ruby extra uh, back to chew, basically. Yeah, all, all for this. Happy days. And Soraya looks like she's getting back to where she was. She looks solid in the ring. Um, yeah. You know, I've always been a massive fan of Paige, Soraya, whatever you want to call her. And, uh, yeah, she seems to... Uh, we said when she made a return, not to expect much, you know, ring rust. She's been out for years kind of thing. Uh, but the more that I'm seeing her again now, she seems to be getting back to, you know, the Paige of old days. Yeah. Yeah, she's got, she's got skills, man. She can go, but it's been quite a long time. So it's good to see her shaking the rust off and getting back in the groove of it. Yeah, she's good. Yeah. She's good, man. Again, another good match. Um, like I said, I don't think it was a bad match on this one. There were three star matches. I don't, I don't want to do the whole star thing, but I can't think of a better way to kind of describe a level of quality. So yeah, there were three star matches, four star matches, four star matches on this pay per view. So there was no bad ones. And this, no, no. you know, in the enjoyable area. So was yeah. it? The tag match next. It was the Texas Death match next. I mean, I just want to get a tag match out of the way. Damn it. <laughs> <Go on. laughs> yeah, the uh, Texas Death match. I've got to say, again, emotional kind of wasn't really there. 
brutal matches for me are kind of hit and miss. I'm not always into them, and you know, pissing blood and barbed wire and all that kind of stuff. I, I I tend to watch them with like a persistent wince on my face and through my hands. Exactly, yeah, exactly. <laughs> but like, I've got to say, this was really well paced, really well worked, and both guys just gave everything. Um, fucking hell, it was it was carnage. <laughs> and I even gave this like a. So the trio's titles got a star on my notes. This match got a star on my notes as well, just because it was just, I felt like it was really, really, really well done. Yeah, um, yeah so bravo to both guys. <laughs> Lopes, how did you feel about the, uh, the brutality, the excess, the fingers in bricks? <laughs> to be honest, I, as bad as it sounds, I was smiling all the way through that match. Yeah, I don't know if that makes me a psycho, but if it does, then so be it. <laughs> you're a sick boy. <laughs> I think one of my favourite points was where Boxley got, when he set up the barbed wire table or the table with the barbed wire on it, and then he got hit into it, and it took him, I think, five minutes, like three or four seconds to realise where he was. It was like the second of, eh, this is fine, and then it's a, <gasps> oh, barbed wire going through my skin. <laughs> Yeah, just like, yeah. I've, I've seen that so many times because I've, I've got that in the TikTok highlight reel. It's literally like, yeah, um, Paige sort of leaps over the top rope, splashes him back into the barbed wire. He lands, and like you literally say, it takes him like three or four seconds, and all of a sudden his eyes pop, and he's like, ah! Yeah. <laughs> it's literally a scream. With You can tell he's screaming without actually screaming because of the way his face is. It's just like, but yeah, that match was just, yeah. <laughs> I'm a big um, I thought they were going to do it when he wrapped his arm in barbed wire. It was nice to sort of see some just standard clotheslines with the barbed wire yeah. around Paige's hands. But me being the sick bastard that I probably was, I was like, yes, we're going to get a bookshot barbed wire lariat. A bookshot. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. A bloody barbed wire shot. It, just, it didn't happen. I'd be like, oh, that would have been an awesome moment. But. Yeah. You know, that's not taking anything away from it. We've got so much in this match. The guys gave 110%. Uh, Even Bob went to the goddamn bricks. Just seeing fingers in bricks and getting stomped. Yeah. I was like, well, I've never seen that in a death match. So anytime mm-hmm. you see something you haven't seen before, you've got to give it a massive fucking tick. Yeah. I thought the, 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 the section had jumped off. Yeah, I, I thought, the end, thought the ending was really well done as well with the chain. Yeah. Like, how the fuck do you beat Moxley, who just seems to be like this un- unbeatable machine? That's how you beat Moxley. <laughs> no, we know how. Strangle what did you take, Logan? No, I was just saying about oh, the um, hangman and the barbed wire when he wrapped it around his midsection and then did the his like, moot fault thing, and it's like, yeah, you crazy son of a... <laughs> yeah, crazy people. Um, did you guys see the picture of um, there was a chair... Uh, wrapped in barbed wire, like stuck in the corner of the ring, and there was like a yep. big clump of hangman's hair, just like oh. like a big fucking chunk of hangman's hair, just in the barbed wire. Oh, <laughs> gruesome. <laughs> That's bad At least the others have got long hair, so we know exactly how bad that feels when you get a massive chunk taken out. <laughs> um. <laughs> I've to have a little comb over. Like, there we go, there we go. Um, uh. <laughs> That, to me, is as great as that match was. It's now tainted, unfortunately, thanks to Dynamite. Which mm, I agree. Dynamite more after the pay-per-view, but I do want to address this while we're talking about it. Is This, to me, would have been the perfect payoff. Hangman's got the third victory. Oh, no, it's 2-all, two, it's two isn't it? 2-2, two, two, yeah. Two. Two. Hangman's got the big, the big victory. Big victories, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It still would have just been nice to call it after this match. It would have been the perfect way to end it. And just be like, look, just leave it at two or just leave both guys on a level. Like I say, if you want to scrutinise it, Paige has got the bigger victories. So he could get the more high ground. Move on. Yeah, let Mox have that fucking time off that we all want him to have. Yeah. Just let it sort of go. Uh, but no, it, it appears that we're continuing with BCC versus Dark Order. But heal BCC, which we will talk about later. It just seems Mox doesn't want time off, does it? To be fair with you, it, like Ren- Rene's Paquette's obviously started working for AW. Yeah. So if Mox was to take time off, 
that would mean Renee is taking time off as well. And she's only just, what, two months or something been working for the company. So in an official on-screen capacity at least. But yeah. um, I don't know, maybe he just doesn't want the time off. But yes, I was, I, I was very much, as soon as I saw Mox on the card for the following Dynamite, I was like, what? Are you fucking serious? Because yeah. I'm, I'm a, very ready to not see Mox for a few months. I, I need, I need him to kind of just go away and make me miss him, kind of thing. Because I'm just kind of a bit. I've seen too much of him lately, and um, a break would be good for him and, and his body <laughs> and my eyes. <laughs> um, but yeah. Now is it the tag match? For God's sake, please let it be the tag match. It's the TNT title match, but we can cover the tag match if you if you like. We'll do that do it the other way around. I just want to get this shower off my fucking head. Right, okay. So let's do the tag match and then and then we'll do the TNT. So yeah, the tag team title four way, the Gung Club champions versus Orange Housen versus Triple J versus the acclaimed. Go. <laughs> I just it was what it was. Any match with Jeff Jarrett involved in if nobody's got this idea already. As much as I make, as much as I love Dan House and as much as I love Orange Cassidy, I just like Jarrett. May Jeff Jarrett be cursed! Uh, <laughs> uh, if you two want to talk about this match, feel free. It was fun. It was fine. Like my my favorite part of the entire match was when there was Satnam and there was Dan Housen and I was just sat there shouting, punch him in the dick at my computer. <laughs> and then he fucking punched him in the dick and I was just celebrating. <laughs> <laughs> yes, Dan Housen. Fantastic. But um yeah, so uh yeah, it was fine. But then it was all leading up to afterwards, basically, wasn't it? So uh FTR returned. Top guys in Top guys in. We uh, we speculated for multiple weeks whether FTR were going to go to back to the Fed or come back re sign with AW. I always had a feeling AW was just going to be where they stayed, and here they are. They are back, and they are picking up their feud with the Guns. The little Bob Shites who held a funeral for them, who've got a win over them, who uh, who carry the belts that they that they want. Uh, and uh, heck yeah, let's do it. Yeah. Um, I, I, as much as I have my little rants and stuff, I do want to big up the Gun Club. I do, I've do. i said it before. I think they are the most improved team over the last 12 months. Uh, they're entertaining as fuck. I don't, they don't bore me when they're on TV. They serve a purpose. They've got the characters down. Um, so yeah, bring on FTR versus the, the Gun Club. Little rat bastards that you just can't wait to see lose, and exactly. you know they're doing the job. They are doing their job. So yeah, all good. Okay. So have a favourite moment in this match? Any highlights? Uh, as bad as it sounds, I think the only highlight that I found quite interesting was obviously the bit that Ash already mentioned with the Dan housing, the Satnam sing, and I thought as bad as it is, the fact that. It, the best part of a match is involving someone who's not even supposed to be there. <laughs> Just shows how yeah. <laughs> that match was and how it was a bit. Mm. Yeah, it's still like I said, it's still there was no bad matches. Um, I it just left a bad taste in my mouth for obvious reasons. Um, but not to besmirch, you know, the other seven or eight guys that were involved. You know, everybody did a shift. It's always cool to see Dan Housen, Orange Cassidy, Jay Leaf was fucking boss. Love Jay Leaf, which is why I'm so love hate about the whole. Double J thing at the minute because he's, he's making me not want to see Joe Lethal. Because yeah. it's like the guy you like and the guy you hate, and it's like you just can't win. <laughs> yeah, you just have to slap them together. So it's like, yeah, how to piss people off. We'll just put these two together. <laughs> and see all the fans. Yeah. Right. Big boy slapping me. Yeah. <laughs> so TNT title match Samoa Joe versus Wardlow. Uh, what? Do you guys want to take it first? You get first one dibs on this one. Yeah. Um, it was, it, it, oh, sorry. <laughs> you said I'm just trying to <laughs> figure out how I can put it into words. <laughs> yeah, it's a bit crackly on my end, so I'm missing words here and there. So if I, if I, if I try and interject, excuse no, me. That's fine. <laughs> but yeah, no, I, I enjoyed it. Like I said, it's, well, it's Samoa Joe and Wardler. So it's just, I don't think it can be a bad match slash men slapping meat moment. It's just, it did exactly what it needed to do. It played well for 
storyline purposes, which obviously I know we'll get onto later on, but it, yeah, it did exactly what it did. It, and it let Joe go off and do what he needs to do on with his other title in the other company. So for me, I think it did everything it had to. There was no, yeah. no complaints really. Yeah. Um, yeah, I mean, we talked about it last week, Ash, where we had Joe down for the victory. Mm-hmm. So obviously what's going to happen on Dynamite this week, uh, which is something I also want to address. Uh, uh, where we obviously thought Hobbs was going to be a face, you know, he's come back. So we thought heel versus face. Uh, it made sense for me for Joe to win it um, for the sake of holding the belt a bit longer. Because uh, we didn't want to see Wardlow win and then drop it. Four days later, three days later, yeah. yeah. Mm. So, um, but yeah, banging match. Let's say both guys start hitting the ground running, which is which you want in a match like this when they've invested so much emotional storytelling into the match. You don't want two guys just to square off. You want the guy who's disrespected the other guy's memory of his father to get smacked in the face right away. Uh, which they did. Wardlow went in, started grounding and pounding, and literally went from there. Yep. Wardlow is so agile, like doing the thing, doing the whisper in the wind, like Jeff Hardy, and like doing the swanton again, like Jeff Hardy. But the the guy, the guy's majestic, man. He just is. <laughs> He's got everything. <laughs> the guy of his size, it's just yeah, like sort of say you can see why other companies are quite high up on him. Because he, he does take, he takes the big man box and he also takes the, uh, he's good in the ring as well. And mm. uh, if you just drop that silly ass clothesline out of his uh, repartee. <laughs> 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 you just need that yeah. out of Just punch him in the nuts. Yeah, as Joe did his thing, as we've both mentioned it before. Now Joe's turned heel. It suits his current style, his you know, his movement a hell of a lot better. He's methodical, you know, he's 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 just a very smart working heel. So yeah, banging match. Knew it would be. And yeah. uh, job was done. In, it was the wrong result for me, but um, it was after watching Dynamite. Yeah, it was the right result for a shitty twist. Yeah, it was. Uh, the end of Dynamite was a bit of a. <clears throat> for me, to be honest with you, like the inclusion of um, QT Marshall. Um, like, I don't know, just wasn't all that into it. But if you remember going back a couple of months when Hobbs and Starks were feuding, there was the factory involved yeah. and there was a favour oh. owed to Hobbs by the factory or something yeah, either way. So, yeah, yeah they, were, they, were, they were bringing that back around, weren't they, basically? But I could have done without QT being in this, to be honest with you. Yeah, because it's one of the things. what QT said to him. He said to him, look, I've got you back no matter what. And obviously, mm-hmm. he's used that main event from Dynamite to pay yeah. him. They give him the Dewey Odin sort of thing, and obviously, it ended how it ended. Yeah. Which is, I'm going to address it now then, because it's we're talking about it. But right, you spend my like, you know me, I love AW. It's still my favorite promotion. I, I, I don't hide that. Um, you, know, you get more hits than misses. This was a major fucking miss for me. You spent months bigging up Hobbs, the book of Hobbs, your vignettes, you know, building up a face reaction. Got a massive pop when he won the Golden Ring. I know it was in his hometown. Um, to then turn heel. This is a Mr. Fucking Iceman, Cutie Marshall. Nothing cools a crowd down more than fucking Cutie. You might as well uh, yeah, just. I agree. It just is illogical for me. You know, you just had this guy. He just, yeah, he was on such a face run. Um, and he, he would have fit the... Wardlow could have gone on to do bigger and better things, main event picture, and it would have left you a good big man in in that sort of area of the card as a face. 
I just yeah, it just puzzles the fuck out. I, mean, I just want I just want Miro to come back now and kick the shit out of him. Well, yeah, I was um, I was kind of hoping the end of the um, the match on Dynamite was gonna be you know Hobbs or Wardlow winning and then Miro's music playing, but obviously the, that would have taken the shine off the big reveal, which was QT and Mister 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 Cheer. Um, so yeah, it was. I understand that Hobbs is a heel. And a heel beating a heel doesn't have the same as uh, same clout as uh, a heel beating a face. So I understand why they put it on, on, on Wardlow. But for Wardlow to be champion for like three days just really sucks and doesn't look good. Uh, but at the same time, I'm delighted for Hobbs because the guy's fucking awesome. And uh, he deserves it. He's been there basically since more or less year one. I don't think he was an original, but he came a little bit after that. But he's been with the company for several years now. Um, and oh, he deserves I, it. I enjoy him. Yeah, yeah. It's just the way the way that it happened was a bit bit shit. Yeah. Things on QT Marshall Logan. Well, me and I. Um, I think you've pretty much covered it. I'm not a massive fan of him. Like, yeah. I, I, I could, like, like you said, I could, I could done without him being there. Like you said, I'd, I'd rather it have been Miro that appeared, and it, I'd have enjoyed it more if Miro appeared because well, yeah. he's just ten times be- more better the athlete than QT was. Slash is just QT is gen- just is oh. is a beginner. Like not a beginner, but like he starts something and then he doesn't be there at the end. He's not an end closing mm. person, in my opinion. He's not yeah. an end boss. Yeah, he's just like he's a, he's he's a dark and elevation dude, isn't he? Really? Yeah. Um, he's a trainer. That's his role. He's good at what he does. Yeah, yeah. He's he's experienced enough to be able to train the factory guys as what he should be doing. Don't want to see him on TV. You get zero reaction from. Well, he does get a reaction. He gets. Quick. Annoyance, but it's not good annoyance. No, yeah. not good heat. <clears throat> I, I felt like that towards the factory for quite a while, though, to be fair. Um, just none of them really. Nick Camarotto just doesn't do anything for me. QT doesn't do anything for me. Aaron Solo doesn't do anything for me. Um, the addition of Paul Say again. They had one good guy and he's not about anymore. David Agogo. Was it was it David Agogo? Anthony Agogo. Anthony, 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 Anthony Thank you. Yeah. Yes, Mr. Agogo. Yeah, he's been doing bits in progress um, back over here. Uh, I don't know whether what's going on there is is he still signed? Is he going to go back over? Is he coming back over to here to just like learn his craft a bit more? I don't know. But yeah, I did like Agogo. I thought there was something there, but he was very 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 rough in the in the ring as a as a wrestler. Um, but yeah, uh, so yeah, <laughs> let's talk about the devil himself. The uh, devil and the dragon. No sympathy, we have no sympathy for the devil. He's a bastard. This was pure cinema from beginning to end, it was perfectly executed from both ends, from beginning to end, and it was just a f- I don't say I ever say this word like lightly, whether it's music or football or whatever. But this match was a fucking masterpiece, absolute masterpiece, and I will not hear anything bad ever said about this match. So, yeah, I'll leave it at that. Off you go. <laughs> Loved it. And folks, we'll let you uh, address the, uh, the first. Uh, yeah, do you enjoy it? Do you think it was paced well? It was paced well. It was even throughout most of it, with obviously there being, I think there were 2 2 for, I think, near enough, I want to say 45 minutes, give or take. Yeah. So it was like the fact that they were able to both get decent shots in and hit the stuff they needed, like the big moves, and then them get out of it and try again. And then they do the opposite where MJF tries to use Brian's move on him and almost gets him to tap out to his own move and then he gets a weird adrenaline boost and 
gets out and continues and the, yeah it was just an absolute banging match and I couldn't think of a better way to end a flipping pay-per-view than that Great and just Story story wise as well. When MJF first started going out to get drinks of water, he's like, "Okay, that's smart." That obviously ties in very close. Well, that tied into the finish. You know, the fact that he'd been going out throughout the match to get these drinks of water, get these bottles of water, you didn't give it a second thought. Or as a, as an opponent, you want to give it a second thought. You would have gone out to grab him, bang, fucking gas cylinder to the head or whatever it was. Yeah, it, yeah, it was a gas canister because obviously it well it ended. And then obviously they restarted it. Cause obviously the time limit ran out. They were two two or three three or something. They were tied. Time limit ran out, so it was like right, it's going to sudden death. But MGF, I think, were knocked out at that point. So that's why they brought in the oxygen tank, which obviously revitalised him. They continued. Then he used the oxygen tank to his advantage to knock Danielson out and then get him to tap out by his own move. I think. Oh, some, some, yeah. 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 Yeah, I think he, it stopped because he well obviously got knocked out, so he couldn't yeah. physically tap out because well he was unconscious. That's it. Sorry, so try there, there had been a few tap outs, aren't there? But yeah, yeah, yeah it's, it's that old uh, we'll knock somebody out, put them in a the submission, and it will look like they're passed out through the pain of the submission. So they get the one stood there picking up his arm and then just dropping it, and it's like picking it up and dropping it, and it was like. It's quite clear he's not <laughs> going to tap out because he can't. I'm hyped for that. I do love a good little uh, one, two, three arm drop. Just purely like it's when you see the third one drop, it very rarely happens. But when you see the, see the see the arm drop, even though you know it's happening. It's yeah. Like, yeah. We had that during um, Wardlow and Joe, didn't we? We forgot to mention um, that's how the finish was. I was a bit surprised by that. Sorry, just to go back. But um, yeah, that's that, that was the finish and it was a bit, a bit surprising. But uh, yeah, it was. Um, I thought the whole match was. I thought there'd be more periods where they're both just kind of, you know, taking breathers and stuff like that. But it just seemed to be going and going and going, like almost constantly the whole time. Very impressive showing from both guys. Obviously, we all knew Danielson can go for forever by the looks of it. But he's, 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 well, I would have this guy. Yeah, he's, 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 he's done it with. Done it with Kenny and Hangman, uh, half hour, 16 minute matches. Um, but yeah, uh, I, I like that you pointed out about the MGF going out for like drink breaks and stuff like that. And then obviously, then the ref doesn't suspect, oh, I was just going out for another drink and then bosh. Like the way MJF, for a man of like 26 years of age, he's got like a the head, the brain of like a 50 year old veteran, 40, 50 year old veteran that's just done it all. Little nuances like that, just adding, yeah. adding, adding the salt onto the, um, onto the, uh, onto the stake of the match was, oh yeah, fantastic, like truly. Yeah. He is a self confessed fan of old school, and you can tell by the way he presents yeah. himself, you know, he, he says he watches like all the old AWA stuff, you know, the old sort of, uh, for horsemen, you know, back in the 70s, the Memphis days, all that kind of stuff, like old school Jerry Lawler, you know, yeah, you know, he's, he's yeah. just an, an advocate for old school heels. Um, yeah. just like I say, he's such an old brain for still a very young wrestler, and he's yeah. only going to get there. You can tell he's a huge Rip Flair fan from even the, the chunks, the way he speaks. Sometimes, if you close your eyes, it sounds like Rip Flair talking. Um, but yeah, that's uh, just another like a reason. I, I, yeah, but we we are he, MJF is a gift. He just is a gift in every way. Did you guys see the media scrum? I oh, missed it, dude. It seriously, I see you say something about CM Punk. Like, was he having a dig at Punk or uh, instant Punk? So. So the first 20 minutes of the media scrum was MJF just basically bursting into the media room and just laying in to Brian Alvarez and fucking whoever was there, like all the all the media guys just saying, I'm the best in the fucking world. I'm the best wrestler in the world, the best pro wrestler, because he's obviously he's just tapped out Danielson. And then he's walking with a crutch as well, which is just hilarious. Um, and then he goes and sits behind the desk with blood on his face 
a towel around his neck, like CM Punk. And then instead of like whatever it was Punk was eating, it was something from a bakery, wasn't it? Mindy's Bakery. He had like a jar of, of pickles. <laughs> <laughs> it, it was incredible so then he's talking answering a question he opens the pickles and then takes a bite of a pickle and goes oh my god that's a fucking good pickle anybody want a piece <laughs> <laughs> he's, he's, he's just fucking hysterical and he just knows exactly what the character is and he's just so funny but yeah he, he mentioned CM Punk by name two times but I felt like the whole sat there with blood towel and then eating something and then bigging up because he picked up the jar and was just like, oh, whatever it was, the, the brand of the pickles. Eat these fucking pickles. Um, <laughs> I, I feel like the whole thing was just like a very, very subtle but not subtle nod to Mr. Mr. Phil Brooks, which, um, yeah. But yeah, I um, if you can, it's on YouTube. The media scrum's on YouTube. It's the first 20 minutes. It's just like everything you love about the MGF character. Just right there. Hello, Miss. Anyway. Awesome. <laughs> Can we agree Brian Danielson is the best wrestler in the world? Yep. Without, without question. It's just, the guy never puts a foot wrong. As good as obviously MJF is, we spent the last five minutes bigging him up. Um, let's, let's not forget Brian Danielson, man. The guy's a fucking, he's a treasure as well. You know, hopefully he'll be around for a while. Um, yeah. I know he's got a promo. Everybody's speculating what it means. I noticed somebody sort of said it probably means he's going to be more attached to Ring of Honor now. I would it's be possible. surprised if he could go back to the Ring of Honor brand for a little bit. Oh, yeah. He said he's, uh, it's time for him to go home or something to that effect, um, which would insinuate Ring of Honor to me, especially after Zack Sabre Jr. on last week's Ring of Honor episode basically called out Danielson just saying like um, I'm gonna like do a really bad Zack Sabre Jr. impression. I was like, oh Danielson, I'm the best fucking technical wrestler in the world. <laughs> um, so that would make sense whether it, whether it, it is to to face Zack Sabre Jr. Um, the G1 in Japan has just kicked off, but I don't know whether that's like home for Danielson. So I don't know, but. Um, I do feel like. If you want to get eyes on a rejuvenized brand, you have Sabre Jr. versus Danielson. I can't wait for everybody, that. Man. Everybody in the wrestling world wants to watch that. I can't if wait for that. Much. So, yeah, yeah banging, banging main event, like I say, just ended on such a high note. Ended with it, it was a fucking masterpiece, as you sort of said. Your words, I agree. Oh, I it was um, tremendous. All in all, I said it was a it was a quality pay per view. There's no bad matches. As much as I bitch and moan about the tag match, it was still a very enjoyable match. Everybody put a shift in, and uh, for me, yeah, as great as the trios match was, as great as the death match was, you cannot deny that I that main event. Is it would like you said it was it was a masterpiece. You would be hard pushed to see a better match this year. I did not believe more for me that for a moment anything could come remotely close to Kenny and Osprey. But like at the moment, it might be recency bias because I've seen the yeah. Ironman match more recently than the Kenny Osprey match, but I feel like the Ironman match at this point is my match of the year. But I definitely need to go back and rewatch Omega Osprey to you know, solidify that or yeah. not. Maybe even joint. Let's, let's just say they're both matches of the year at the moment because they're so, both they're both astonishing. I'd say they're on par with each other. Yes. Two very different matches as well, though. So I don't think there's a wrong answer. If you said either one of them was yeah. the year so far, you would have a damn good fucking argument as to why you're right. So. Yeah, that's definitely those two are sitting on top of the podium at the minute for me. Um, and yeah, we'll see what else comes. Uh, you know, whether we get another Seamus Walter banger at some point or yeah, yeah, Cody. I can't see Cody Reigns being a five star match, it might be a five star story match, it won't be a five star wrestling match. It'll be a five star story match, yeah, I absolutely agree with that. 
Uh, we'll see what 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 the uh, what the W can do at some point down the line as well. Um, so pay per view banging, awesome. Um, Dynamite. I I don't think there's been a bad episode of Dynamite. There's just been very varying degrees of entertainment or good or above average. Um, there's never been a bad episode. This was very. This was far from a bad episode. It had lots of good bits in it. Yeah. It had leave a bad taste, which we discussed due to the end of the episode. Mm-hmm. It started with Orange Cassidy, who seems to be Mr. Opening Match on Dynamite at the minute. Yeah. Uh, in an absolute, it, it's Cassidy's fucking awesome, man. You give Cassidy a singles match, you put him in the ring with Jay Lethal. That's. 20 minutes of fucking gold. I enjoyed the shit out of this match, it must be honest. It must be honest. Um, now the guy can do a foot wrong, in my opinion. Two of the best about doing what they do. Hell yeah. To be honest with you, this was the first match, the first title defence of Cassidy's uh, now international championship, not the All Atlantic anymore. So it's the international title that he holds. This was the first match I saw and thought Lethal could win here. Yeah. Because Lethal kind of needs something because this little stable that he's got going on is shit. (laughs) (laughs) And um, he's one of the best about, so you know what I mean? Um, But I'm I'm more than happy for Cassidy to have gotten the win because he's great. Love the guy. He's been doing the same... The same gimmick since AW's inception, and everybody still loves the bones of him. So that tells you everything. Just keeps getting better, though. That's why. Yeah. Uh, Logs, what's, what's your thoughts on this match? You enjoy this match? You uh, you reckon that Cassidy is having banger after banger? Yeah, it's like it, I think personally, I think it's hard for him not to have banger after banger because of the way he wrestles, like his unique approach to wrestling or yes. it's just it's unorthodox it's never been seen before so for him to he can't go he can't put a foot wrong with the way he does what he does <laughs> yeah the guy could have a match with fresh air and make it good <laughs> uh, but it was just a, it, was, it was again it was the storytelling in this it was like lethal working on cassidy's leg uh cassidy working on lethal's arm when fucking lethal went for the lethal injection and his fucking arm went, I was like, oh shit. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. Just a little, little slip of an arm and it just fell, but you just felt like, oh, son of a bitch. Yeah. Good stuff. Uh, but then obviously it got ruined. Uh, no, I won't talk about that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the. Um... So he's got a title match against Double J next week, hasn't he? The first title defence of the international since the change of name. So yeah. um, all I want... Shazam! Yeah, for Shazam. Yeah, it's, it's funny how they've tied that in together. But um, that looks like a good movie, though, to be fair. The first one, this one. That's tainted for me as well, twats. <laughs> What's that, sorry? That's tainted for me now as well, the twats. What, Shazam? <laughs> yeah. I see Shazam, I'm going to see fucking Double J. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like, just imagine, like, the big villain in whatever whatever the villain is in Shazam, just see him, like, with a white slick back longish hair and a, a little yeah, handle. I'm going to be fuming. <laughs> Don't piss me off. Um, yeah, so, should we move on to the next segment? Yep. Which was a promo from Ricky Starks. I can't remember exactly what he was saying, but it basically was interrupted by the Bullet Club theme on the on the Tron and the abs- and the original Bullet Club theme to Effin Sweet, which for a moment had me thinking, is this Jay fucking White about to show up? Uh, and then it was Juice Robinson from behind. Um, a lot of people have been kind of like complaining about this, but to me, this is fun. This is going to be a fun feud. It's going to have a couple of good matches, and it's going to be a, a nice placeholder 
maybe for stocks. Maybe I'm underselling Juice Robinson, but it'll be a nice um, placeholder for stocks now for moving on to his double or nothing feud, perhaps. Definitely. And it's Juice Robinson versus Ricky Starks, man. How, how can anyone complain about that? You're going to get some really good matches. Rock hard. <laughs> you know, Starks is coming off a victory against Jericho. That automatically gives credibility to Robinson. The fact that Starks is feuding with Robinson, you know, it's, yeah, I, I, I don't see a downside to this. Yeah, since he's come in, he's not really done a lot of anything, Rob Juice Robinson. So this this feud's going to be good. I'm looking forward to it personally. Are you like Stuart? Obviously, you've seen Robinson a few times in AEW. Um, you're looking forward to hopefully just getting Robinson a bit more of a highlight. You'll get to see more of what he can do. Oh yeah, no, I look, I look I'm looking forward to it because, like you said, it, it gives Ricky Stark something else to focus on now that he's done with the done with the JAS. So it gives him someone else to focus on and build momentum and chemistry and whatnot with and it was a good storyline and like it could potentially lead into other bullet club members appearing potentially because i think there's there's a couple that are free agents of them i think there's two that i'm aware of that are free agents and obviously one of them's jay white and hikaleo i think he's called i think he's another one that's free oh, at the yeah. moment so, yeah so <laughs> potential for more people to show up and but for me Starks it could be a recruitment thing as well I know Starks is face at the minute but Starks character and everything would suit the, the bullet club you know to a T you know if they ever want to turn Starks heel put a t-shirt on him man you're going to sell fucking merchandise well, that's a good it point works. actually I think it's probably too soon to turn him heel again yeah but uh, that's a fucking good idea really down the line, man. But I, I feel people have been speculating who the new leader of Bullet Club is going to be since Jay White appears like he's going to they've, WWE. They've in my, put, uh, in my in opinion. I think Ryan posted it in the group yesterday. Uh, somebody attacked uh, Jay from behind. David Finlay, who used to be in a tag team with Juice Robinson, Finn Juice. So David Finlay, the son of Fit Finlay. Yes. Um... So, yeah, he's debuted a new look, new theme, new attire, just new swagger. Seems like he's going to be the new Gaijin. Yeah. So, cool, man. Good for him. Yeah. yeah, definitely good for him. You know, he's, uh, his dad was a fucking legend. His dad was awesome. Uh, yeah, Dave, we've seen him on AEW a couple of times, I think. So, that'll be nice, you know, if we can kind of uh, keep that connection, have him turn up at Forbidden Door, build it up a little bit. It just keeps the AEW New Japan partnership exciting. Imagine Juice Robinson versus Starks is basically just a prelude to Jay White showing up and it's Ricky Starks versus Jay White. Fuck me, my brain just exploded thinking of that. <laughs> <laughs> holy shit. I don't Nothing believe that's happening. I don't believe that's happening, but holy shit, we can dream. <laughs> so we've got booking. Star coming up as well. Fantasy Hello. booking, that's why we love AEW. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, man, for sure. Uh, what came after this, then? So, after that was a Ruby Soho. From, I did this from memory, but I think after that became, came a Ruby Soho promo, um, which I can't really remember what she was talking about. She was, she was going on about... Why she went heel, probably, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah something so. along those lines, yeah. And then somewhere... Sorry, Lux, what were you saying? I was just saying the promo was basically her explaining from when she got through the door... That she was the fans like they booed her from the get go, and none of them were a bit. They were a bit funny with her, and then she lost. And so she was just like, "You've sort of seen me as an outcast from the start, and I'm now going to repay you by beating up all your homegrown talents one by one." And then obviously she mentioned Willow because of her <laughs> things she did with Willow in the street fight when it was Ruby, yeah. Willow, and Jamie and Brit. I want to say, no, it wasn't. It was. Willow, yeah, yeah. Ty, yeah, it was. Yeah, it was them. Yeah. Ty and, yeah. Ty and Anna. Yeah. So. So yeah, there was there was that promo, and then there was the video package for Danielson saying he's going home, which we've already touched on. 
the next match was the JAS Garcia, Guevara, and Jericho versus Top Flight and AR Fox in the trios match, which was super fun yep. um, and kind of set up nicely what was to happen afterwards, which blew my fucking socks off. Um, so the JAS, after, the, after they scored the win, they laid down a challenge to the House of Black for the trio's titles. So then the lights go out, everybody thinks it's the House of Black, and then nope. ca- carry on my way with Sun the Super. Um, yeah, they, uh, the, the elite come out and start, start talking about how they deserve another shot. Um, and then the lights go out again and the House of Black turn up and then the House of Black are basically just like, we'll take you both on. So it's literally nine of the sexiest boys in the world <laughs> taking each other on in, in Canada the next week. Um, I was hyped for the Elite versus the JAS, by the way. Yeah. And, the, and then the Thank addition the of the House of Black, just literally, I was sat there like, are you going fucking kidding me? Holy shit. <laughs> um, Insert yeah. the Randy Morsh jizz in front of his computer screen. <laughs> e- ectoplasm. <laughs> That's it, man. Yeah. But yeah, that is just, like I said, I, I was excited when it, I thought it was going to be JAS versus the Elite. I thought that was good. It's always nice to see Kenny and Jericho. Those guys can still go. They've got a good chemistry, Gossi and Sammy versus the Bucks would be good tag team matches. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, those six guys. And then, like I said, just throw in the house of Black Man and you just got to fucking... If that's not in the main event on Dynamite next week, then I will be very surprised because that, that's going to steal the fucking show. Yeah, it's going to be ridiculous. How do we even begin to, like coordinate that match whoever the producer is for that match is just got his hands full his or her hands full because it's just like you know nine guys all need to get the stuff in they need to pace it well you know the 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 near fly ah, it's, it's crazy I, I love the whole the, the ideology behind how you pace matches and what to do and what not to do and all that kind of stuff i find it all very intriguing um it, yeah. it's good i mean obviously we discussed the elite dropping the trios title so they could go back to do the tags and singles but i'll make the exception for that for this match yeah i would like to see that sooner rather than later though kenny as a singles guy just seems well we've got like you know mjf versus kenny would be incredible we've got uh kenny versus takesta possibly because of the whole don Callis thing so there's two there. There's even the Adam Cole feud as well, but they're both kind of baby faces at the minute. So maybe, maybe not. Maybe, maybe a bit later on. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, there's there's things things to be done there for sure. Right, you like is uh, right. I'll put you on the spot. Out of the two, out of the three teams, forget House of Black just winning the title. It doesn't matter who's just got the title or anything like that. Who would you put your money on to win out of those three teams? Um, I think the elite possibly because, like I said, obviously the House of Blacks just come off winning the titles, so they've already got momentum. Whereas if the elite win it, they they can build up some momentum and get going to. Well, all the saying that after what you've just said, it's probably best if they don't get momentum because if you want them to split back to the tag team in a single it's best if they don't have momentum as a trio because otherwise yeah. that'll force them to stay as a trio so yeah exactly. i think i'd have to say probably well for me house of house of black jas looking at the lights probably paul garcia will get pinned and uh yeah that'll be it yeah. black man fat fan danny garcia. see you later dante's inferno see you bye so, that's, that's, such, such a, that's such a fucking sick move, though. Yes, imagine, uh, imagine, imagine the trust you need to have in those guys to do that to you without, like, literally breaking your face yeah. and your neck. <laughs> well, uh, respect, man. Well, uh, they know what they're doing. So, uh, was it the Ruby versus, I want to say, Sky Blue after this? 
I think so, yeah. But um, which was, which was a, a fine match, yeah. And then that was the promo that we touched on. I couldn't remember the exact order of Dynamite, so I kind of just hodgepodge what <laughs> I remember into my notes here. So it's all topsy turvy, then fair enough. <laughs> yeah, again, the Ruby story, you know, cementing the heel, um, obviously cementing even further with the kick in that Willow took after the match. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And, Getting sprayed, and uh, Soraya, Tony, and Ruby standing tall. Yeah, man. Yeah, Ruby's inclusions massive positive for me, and it's made me a hell of a lot more um, uh, positive towards the whole thing because I just wasn't vibing it at all for the first uh, first first few weeks of just them two. But yeah, it, it's all good. So was it the Cesaro, or, or sorry, Claudio and Mox versus Dark Order next? It was, yeah, um, which I was surprised to see on the card, especially Mox's inclusion. Uh, always happy to see Dark Order on, on Dynamite. I feel like they've been massively just kind of forgotten about or under underutilized for absolutely ages they just seem to lose all the time which happened here to be fair but um yeah it's just good to see them on tv but yeah uh, i was a little bit like really at the end of this match with the whole reveal at the end um the bcc got the win and then they continued to lay in to the Dark Order members as they were on the deck, basically turning heel of what it appears to be. Um, the BCC for me has just kind of, it's gone from being one of the most exciting things in pro wrestling to just being like, I'm not bothered, which really disappoints me. Like, I'm just not bothered. I'm not bothered. I'm not bothered at all. Like, like, I, like I like all the guys, but as a as a as a collective, I'm I'm just kind of not there yet. So I'm going to see how the heel turn changes things. And yeah. What about you, like BCC fan? Do you want to see Miss Heels? Are you interested to sort of see if this adds another dynamic to the group? Yeah, yeah, I'm a fan of them. I I like them, and I think they work well as heels. So I think it'll be interesting to see where they go with the heel turn. Mm. down the line I think personally I think with obviously the situation that uh, you are and Claudia are in I think it's best if they leave it for Ring of Honor at the moment personally because yeah. obviously you as the pure and Claudio's world so it makes sense for them to <laughs> focus yeah. on over there rather than on AEW not saying I don't want them on AEW I'm just saying I think it'd be better if they focus over there for a little bit and, and uh, if, you want eyes, if you want eyes on Ring of Honor have them on Ring of Honor don't have them on both shows take them away from AEW for a little <laughs> bit Make, if you want to see them you've got to watch a uh, Ring of Honor kind of thing if you want to see the Ring of Honor world champion you watch Ring of Honor kind of thing um, the exception of you are in that group I, I may be way off the mark here but my first thought was that's two more former W guys turning heel. It was, yeah. So I don't, I don't know if it's just bad timing and the fact that you've had Storms Ray and Ruby turn heel. Uh, now you've had Mox and Claudio turning heel. Um, yeah, it just kind of seems against the Dark Order. You know, everybody loves the underdogs there, AEW originals. You know, so it just it might just be coincidence. It might just be bad timing. But to me, it just seemed too close to the Soraya, Ruby, Tony situation. Yeah, true that. And then, of course, we had uh, Hangman coming out to defend his Dark Order, Dark Order buddies, which still is continuing the fucking Mox Hangman feud, even after four matches. Um, which I, I just don't want to see it anymore. I'd, I'd much rather see Hangman go off and do something else completely fresh and whether the BCC want to turn heel or not that's fine just have them feud with 
maybe somebody else. But I, that said, like I say, I, uh, I I'm I am happy the Dark Order are in a program like on yep. TV. I am happy for that, but no, it's just elements that I'm just not completely into. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. yeah. And then it was the pretty much the main event, wasn't it? Yeah, I believe so. Yeah, which was fine. I, I like how they lent into the uh, obviously Wardlow had his car broken into and all his his gear and his his title belt uh, belt title belt um, stolen, um, which sucks big time for that to happen to anybody. Um, but yeah, they they lent into it in the match, didn't they? Basically started in the back and then within like a minute they were like powerbombing each other or whatever it was on on a car <laughs> slamming each other into a car and that so that was um it was, it was cool how they uh included that uh but the match was fine just the ending sucked <laughs> yeah banging match uh you know fucking swans on through the table on the outside by wardlow uh, fucking spine on the pine by hobbs which still looks boss you know, there's very few people at the minute that can do spine buster as good as Hobbs, in my opinion. Got, got the spine, best spine buster in the business at the moment, in my opinion. Uh, Lugs, what do you think to the main event? Yeah, like I said, I I enjoyed it. Obviously, minus the obviously the way it ended, but I think the match itself just kind of made up for that a little bit. Yeah. If you you can kind of forget about how it ended when you look at what went on during, with obviously yeah the getting power bombed on the car and the swanton thing through the table and yeah it was just bagging match tainted by a questionable ending uh, it finished pretty much well. up for me it was a it was a very enjoyable episode there's lots of quality bits in there it was just tainted by a fucking shitty ending uh, yeah. yeah and that's unfortunate but I- Again, um, made up for Will Hobbs, yeah. the guy, the guy, uh, the guy's ace, and you know deserves his flowers and his his title reign. Hopefully, now this is a fairly long reign because I've people have joked about in comment sections on social media a fair bit. People have been calling it the twenty four, the new twenty four seven title. You know, just like you know, poking for you know, brain dead idiots. But it, it that is that is a funny comparison. But um, but uh, it has been kind of the last couple of months hot potato. So it went from Wardlow to Joe to Derby to Joe to Wardlow to Hobbs all in the space of what, like two months or so, something three like months. that, two or three months. And um, there's, there's there's methods behind some of those exchanges. But I do believe that Hobbs having a run has been in the works and uh, planned for quite some time. So Definitely. So let's, let's have it, Mr. Powerhouse. Hobbs, the new king of TV. Long uh-huh. way. So, yeah, overall, AEW deliver again. Bagging pay-per-view. Uh, obviously, we've found things to grumble about. We're always going to find things to grumble about when it comes to wrestling. Um, the things that we grumble about, other people might fucking knock one off over. They might love it. That's the world of us. Everybody, all of the time. So, yeah. you know, if people liked what we didn't, fair play to you. Awesome. If you can find enjoyment in something that I don't like, God, awesome. that's great. Um, yeah. So, yeah. But if I grumble about two things, I'm going to big up eight other things. So, the. Law of averages are I'm big up a hell of well, we're big up a hell of a lot more than what we're grumbling about. Hundred percent, yeah. Well, um, the pay per view was so fucking good that I had high expectations for this episode of Dynamite. And whereas it was good, it could have been better. The fact that there was no FTR was kind of disappointing. It wasn't FTR went on this show at all, were they? They did got they got very much. Were they on the promo? I couldn't remember it at all. I was I was racking my brain earlier trying to think. Were they on the show or weren't they? Because I, I just literally couldn't remember. Yeah. Um, yeah. Oh right. Well, uh, boo me. Um, but yeah, I just couldn't remember whether they were on or not. So um, yeah. But yeah. Um, yeah. Let's just see how what rampage tonight. I think the standout there is. Um, 
Takesta versus Preston Vance, which should be cool. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, Sam, somebody in it. Sam. Guevara's got a match. It's a, a action, action Andretti again, isn't it? It's um, round two for those two guys. Yeah, they'll be a good match. It'll be a fast paced, yeah. enjoyable match. Uh, you know, verdict still out on uh, Andretti. He, mm-hmm. He's got does in the ring, doesn't seem to have any charisma or you know, personality about him yet, but that'll come. Yeah, and I think the other match is Riho versus Nyla Rose, the first two AW Women's Champions ever. So that's quite cool to come back around to that. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, should be cool. Jobs are good. Yeah. Sweet. Yeah. Um, right, we have run excessively longer than we do normally. So, <laughs> when my phone runs out of memory, I will. Uh, do you want to plug the socials, do your things, say hello to people, goodbye to people? Yeah, of course. Um, so my uh, Instagram is best place for me. Um, my personal is Tankle underscore Grimoire. I also run the work the left side Instagram, which is WTLS three sixteen, and I'm posting all kinds of random stuff in the stories there. And you're smashing it, mate, on Instagram. Yeah, my account's fucking boss. So yeah, so um, there's always to be seen in the stories. Yeah, I'm I'm obsessed with wrestling. It's quite plain to see. Yeah. Spend spend yeah. two minutes with me, and I'll I'll uh, I'll just say a lot of words to you about wrestling. Like uh, so, um, so yeah, all into all, all into it. You're, you're on TikTok now. I'll see you. On, yeah, I'll see you on Facebook. You post your stuff in the uh, left side yeah. Facebook group. Yeah, oh, now. Facebook's probably the best place. It's just in that group chat, really. I mean, if you want to follow me on TikTok, by all means, go for it. But <laughs> you're dancing. You're, you're doing. You're doing some dance videos, folks. No. no. <laughs> <laughs> you, you, you should. You should. You, 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 your niche on TikTok should be like um, wrestling themes, and then doing a little choreographed dance to like wrestling themes. <laughs> <laughs> cool. Right, I might, have to go to, I might have to go do one to Ray Ripley's now. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Uh, I have to do uh, stop practicing the water spit and start like doing just random triple H entrances in places. It's a bit more. Just walked into our yeah. That's it. Uh, obviously, uh, follow us on Twitter at WTLS420. That's my uh, handle on Twitter. Same on TikTok. And uh, we are on Facebook. Uh, if you're watching this, Help us grow the following on TikTok. You'll just basically see a shed load of highlight reels that I put together on TikTok, just showing you the uh, episodes on Dynamite or pay-per-views or stuff like that. So uh, they're pretty cool in my opinion. So yeah, go check them out. And uh, thank you for watching, gentlemen. As always, we have managed to ramble off like an hour and twenty minutes. So I will let you go. Thank you for watching this. If you still are, don't I've forget got- to. Hit- I've got more to say. (laughs) If it's it, my phone can't handle it. Let's go for four hours, brother. (laughs) I've got to go. And uh, uh, we'll see you all very, very soon. Peace.